Howdy guys, it's Endless OS version 6. Endless OS is a GNOME-based system with a focus on education as well as ease of use. The foundation that makes it has a few things on, affordable laptops, education through games, and lots of education resources, as well as the OS we will be looking at. They sure mean it when they say ease of use. They even have a Windows installer. There's also multiple ISO versions, one with an offline installer, which clocks in at more than 20 gig in a base version, as well as multiple language versions. Some nice little branding. You can always tell the level of polish to expect based on how they treat their branding and logos. And we now have a simple little installer. Not a whole lot of options, but if you want ease of use, that's a good thing. Wow, that is a short installer. I could barely start my cup of tea. So we are now in the installed system and it looks like we have some setup we need to do. Everything so far has been quite quick and painless. Okay, that's a little annoying. It's forcing a password scheme on me, so I can't use the super secret password I normally use. There's also a welcome tour, although I think it may just be the standard GNOME tour. That reminds me, this is actually the first GNOME review I've done on any distro. I actually use GNOME on my daily driver, so this will be interesting. Righto. So as a GNOME user, the first thing you notice is that Endless has added desktop tiles. It looks like the application menu is set to be open by default. And of course you have workspaces, except it's called activities. The bottom panel, which is also not default GNOME, has Chromium, File Manager, and App Store. You also have the standard widgets at the top, with light and dark mode toggle, of course. Let's open the File Manager, and that looks like the standard GNOME Files application. So one thing that feels different is this always open app menu. Normally you can right click on the desktop to get the wallpaper and display menu, but because the application drawer is now essentially the desktop, that doesn't work. It looks like you need to have an app open first, then when you right click, you're able to click on the desktop. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that. It might just be because it's what I'm used to. If you've never used GNOME or Linux, it may just feel normal to you. So I spent a couple of minutes looking for the terminal, then I realized it was because of GNOME's application folder grouping. Weirdly, we seem to have two utilities folders, and one of them has the terminal application. This is the base version of Endless OS, so we don't have the additional educational applications and games, as well as the media tools that the full offline version comes with. Most of what is installed here are the standard GNOME applications, which, although not as numerous as something like KDE, you can generally find the right tool for most common tasks. Okay, my favorite part, wallpapers. Endless OS comes with a number of really nice ones. There's no wallpaper with their branding though, which would have been nice, but it's still a very nice selection. I'm sort of coming around to the always open app drawer. If you're new to Endless, I can see how you would just get used to it straight away. And it seems quicker to get around rather than having to click or press a super key. 
GNOME in general is a desktop environment that you don't really notice most of the time. It stays out of your way until you expect it to behave a certain way. And then you get annoyed and use KDE or Cinnamon. But I've generally found that if you give it time, GNOME comes good or at least becomes acceptable. Endless OS uses the standard GNOME Software Center, but what makes it interesting is the selection of applications. Lots of the educational content I mentioned earlier, including games. This White House application, for example, looks like a shooter of some sort, which is meant to teach you CSS. Wow, that's a definite download. All these apps are marked as from Endless Studios, which I believe is part of their community game studio, which focus on learning and giving young game devs a chance to shine. That's something I can get behind. Well guys, until next time.